Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. Today I'm going to be attempting to start a quilt. I have never had any interest in getting into quilting. It's never been something I've been drawn to. I've dabbled with quilting a little bit, but I've never completed a full proper quilt project before. But I have lately been obsessed with this brand called Project Itany. I think that's how you pronounce it. Apparently it means project cushion in Finnish and they create the most beautiful quilted products, including the most beautiful quilts that you will ever see. I am just so, so inspired by them. And ever since I discovered them, I've wanted to have a go at making a quilt for myself. Here is a little look at some of their products that was in a recent Frankie magazine. But I thought this gives you a good idea of the kind of products they create. Like they're not your typical quilt at all. They're really quite quirky, um, but the color palettes they use are just very much my style, very kind of muted pastel colors, which I really like. And in particular, I have been really inspired by this quilt here. It's basically just been made up of heaps of diamonds but I love how they've spaced out the bright colored diamonds with just plain white diamonds. Um, I think that looks really effective. And so, yeah, I'm taking quite a lot of inspiration from this type of quilt and am going to try and see if I can make something similar for myself. I've also been really inspired by an account on Instagram called Golden Hour. Again, they just have such a unique and beautiful color palette for their quilts. And they just look so different to what I guess you would consider a typical quilt or well, what I think of when I think of quilting anyway. They use naturally dyed textiles for their quilt, which uh, I just think looks so beautiful. And what I love about their quilts is they hand quilt them, which I think I'm gonna try and do for my quilt as well. Um, I'm going to stitch the actual quilt top by the machine, but then I wanna see if I can quilt all the layers together by hand, because I really think it gives the quilt such a beautiful texture and yeah, just adds that, extra special layer to the quilt. And yeah, like I said, I've never made a quilt before, so I'm not sure how I'm going to go. I feel like it's going to be quite a massive project. It's currently coming towards the end of May. So this is kind of like the timestamp of when I'm starting this project. And it will be interesting to see how long it actually takes me to make. It could take a few months, it could take a year. I have no idea what to expect, but I'm going to document the whole process because I think it's going to be such a fun project and yeah, let me show you the fabrics I have chosen for it. Okay, so here is the pile of fabrics I have chosen to make my quilt from. Um, as you can see, the colour palette has been heavily inspired by Project Itany um, because I'm completely obsessed. So similar to the diamond quilt I just showed you, I want to potentially alternate the coloured and printed fabrics with just the plain white, but I'm not exactly 100% sure yet how it's going to look. I think I'm going to cut some diamonds out of each fabric and lay them out, see how they look together. I also considered maybe making this floral the alternate fabric instead of white um and that way you have like plain colors alternating with a floral so i might lay that out as well and see how that looks i've also included this mustard gingham as well which kind of links in nicely to this floral um as well as this kind of darker brown i feel like all the colors work nicely together i'm just not sure about whether or not the gingham print will work with these fabrics I've also got this peach fabric that I've recycled from a tablecloth, but then I've also got this green textured fabric that I've actually made a blouse out of. I'm not sure how this fabric's gonna go because it does have a slightly different texture to all the cottons. It is a cotton, but it's a little bit more lightweight and does have a slight stretch. So I don't know if that's going to work when it comes to quilting. I am a complete novice. I have no idea if that's going to work or if it's going to make my quilt look really weird or just warp it somehow. I have no idea, but I'm gonna give it a try because I really love this pistachio green color and I feel like it ties in all the other colors nicely. Like it's just a little bit of a contrast. So in terms of equipment, I have kind of gone all out. I've done a little bit of research um, and so I've bought a cutting mat. I was very kindly gifted this rotary cutter by LDH Scissors and I'll have them linked below because I have an affiliate link um, which means you can get 10% off and I also picked up this diamond template. I did a little bit of research on how to quilt 
diamond shapes and a really helpful video popped up on YouTube and they were spruiking this particular template, which just seems like it's going to make the whole process so much easier. So I decided to pick that up. I just think having a template that I can use my rotary cutter to like cut out will just be so quick and easy um, as cutting out fabric's not my favorite thing to do. And I feel like there's going to be a lot of that for this quilt project. And to also help me get a little bit of an understanding of the basics of quilting, I've been taking a Skillshare class called Sewing Your First Quilt Block by Esther Nariyoshi. And I've learned so many basic tips on how to get started, which I think will come in so handy today. Skillshare has been such an amazing supporter of this channel and I've worked with them in the past and I'm so, so excited to be working with them again. If you haven't heard of Skillshare yet, then it is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for people who love learning new skills or simply just want to explore their creativity more. On Skillshare, you can find classes on a range of different topics, including photography, illustration, sewing, quilting, productivity, graphic design, the list goes on and on. I love Skillshare so much that I actually pay for the service myself because I just find it so, so valuable as I am constantly wanting to learn new skills and explore new creative hobbies. And as soon as I knew I wanted to have a go at quilting, I went straight to Skillshare to see if there are any helpful classes that could help me get started with the basics. And I'm so glad to have found Esther Nariyoshi's class. It covers everything from how to pick different fabrics, what sort of fabrics work well together, how to actually go about constructing a quilt, all the finishing touches, as well as some of the common issues that can pop up along the way and all the ways you can fix them. So if you'd like to explore Skillshare for yourself, then the first 1000 people to click the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium, which is honestly so much value. You can learn so much in that short amount of time. And yeah, thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So I think I'm just going to start by cutting out a couple of diamonds out of each fabric and then I'll lay them out, see what sort of design I'm happy with, and we'll go from there. I've just had my first injury from the rotary cutter. It's going to take me a little while to get the hang of using it. It just feels really awkward and uncomfortable for me. I do think because I'm slightly ambidextrous, it does make it a little bit easier, but yeah, it did nick my finger a bit. But I have cut out the first few diamonds and I'm just going to lay them out now. See kind of what layout I like the look of, whether I want to go just the floral as the in-between or the white. Um... Yeah, let's just have a little bit of a play. Okay. I feel like this gives you a little bit of an idea. So here's what having the floral contrast looks like. And this is what it will look like with the white. Obviously having the white would look a lot more similar to the Project Edeny quilt. But then the floral is kind of cool. Like it's a little bit different and very busy, but in a good way. This is going to be so tricky to decide. I think I'm just going to cut out even more and lay out an even bigger test portion and go from there. Okay, I have made my decision. I think the quilt is just going to be better if I go with the white as the contrast. I think it makes the other colors stand out a lot better. Even though I do like the busyness of having the floral as the contrast, I think ultimately this is going to end up as a much nicer quilt. 
yeah I'm so excited to get started look how beautiful these colors go together I am so pumped um so now I'm gonna spend a few hours cutting out these diamonds after a while I realized there was a much easier and more efficient way to cut out the diamonds and that was to cut them out on the side like this by cutting them out this way, I ended up getting a lot more diamonds cut in a lot less time and it was also a much less wasteful way to cut them out as well. I finished cutting out the first batch of diamonds and look how cute all the colors look together so now what I need to do is sew a diagonal strip like a long diagonal strip like this um, and then I'll be stitching those strips together to create the quilt I'm not gonna do a pattern or anything I'm just gonna randomly put each colored and printed piece up against the white um, in no particular order. I think that will kind of look best. And yeah, I'm excited to finally get started with the stitching part of this quilt. To sew the diamonds, I simply placed two together with right sides together and stitched them along one of the sides but I quickly realized that it actually mattered which side you stitched because this happened pretty much straight away. <laughs> so I decided to just start again and was very careful to stitch along the correct side. For my quilt, I was using a quarter inch seam allowance throughout the whole project. Once I had a bunch of diamonds stitched together into a strip, I then pressed open the seams with my iron. I think normally with quilting you're meant to press the seams towards one side, but with a diamond quilt like this, it's apparently best to press the seams open. I then continued to just stitch up strips of diamonds and tried to spread out the different colors and fabrics as much as possible. But like I said, I didn't try to follow any type of pattern or anything. And once placed next to each other, I started to get a really good idea on how this quilt was going to look. I honestly found this part of the project so cozy and relaxing. I just had the office playing in the background and spent a good chunk of the afternoon stitching up these diamonds. Okay, so it's the next day now and I am enjoying this whole quilting thing even more than I thought I would and I find it so so relaxing like yesterday afternoon I just stitched away it started raining outside and it was just the most relaxing thing ever so at the moment I'm just stitching strips of all the diamonds together and then they will be stitched together once they're all made and look how pretty the colors look I think the fabrics work together so nicely and it's really nice that they've all been broken up by the white pieces it makes for such an effective quilt I'm not exactly sure how big this quilt is going to end up but I think I'm about halfway so the longest strip I've done so far is about 17 diamonds and I think that's as long as I want my quilt to be because I will be adding binding to the edges. So yeah, I think I'm about halfway and yeah, I'm just really keen to get working on it again today.
decided to just go ahead and lay what I've done so far on my bed just to get an idea of how big this quilt is going to be. It's plenty long enough, but it's quite skinny and I'm not sure what to do about that. <laughs> the longest strand is 17, um, which is this one here, I think. So maybe if I add an even longer one that will push it out a little bit further. Yeah, I think if I go two more strips wider, that should be enough, I think. But yeah, look how gorgeous it looks. I'm so, so impressed with myself. It's so much fun. Like, I didn't think I'd get this much done this quickly, but I just can't stop. It's so, so fun to do. Okay, so now I have the fun task of stitching all of these strips together. I actually did a bit of research and apparently when working with diamonds like this, it's best to like offset it slightly so that instead of lining up the seams perfectly, which would then cause the seams to be slightly off like this, but what you're meant to do instead is actually line up the quarter inch seam allowance with the seam on the right side and that way once it's flipped it'll actually line up perfectly hopefully that makes sense um yeah this is going to take a long time i think um but i thought i'd just get started this afternoon and see how far i can go So it's a week or so later, um, literally I started this quilt a week and one day ago and I've already finished the entire quilt top. Let me show you how it's looking. Here it is, I've just folded it up, which I was a little nervous about because I don't want it to crease or anything, I'm so precious about it. Here is a closer look, like it's not perfect, but I'm pretty impressed with how well all the diamonds have lined up. Um, I must have kept my seam allowance nice and consistent and yeah, I could not be happier with how it's looking. It is currently Friday and the plan for today is to see if I can figure out a quilt backing for this quilt and also see whether or not I've got enough wadding or batting to put in between the quilt and the quilt backing. <laughs> because like I said, I am going to try and hand quilt this quilt, um, which I understand is going to take quite a long time. It ended up being quite massive. I haven't actually measured it properly yet, but I'm about to do that so I can figure out if I do have enough backing materials and wadding. But because it's Friday and the weekend is looking like it's going to rain all weekend, I want to get this quilt ready for hand quilting so I can just spend the weekend sitting on the couch watching movies and hand stitching my quilt. It's going to be a super cozy weekend. So yeah, let's measure up this quilt and see how much wadding and quilt backing we're going to need. Okay, so at the moment, this quilt is 115 centimeters by 200. Um, so it's quite a long, skinny quilt. And I've realized I probably need to add the 
border to the outside edge before I actually start hand quilting. I'm just going to make the border out of this white cotton fabric um, so it kind of like blends into the edges a bit. I don't actually have that much of the white left at all. Hopefully I've got enough to do the border edge. What apparently I have to do is trim the diamonds along the edge in half um, but leaving a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the edge. I've got a bit of an issue with this though because these white diamonds should have gone a quarter of an inch longer than the point of these printed diamonds but as you can see I've had an issue where this one hasn't gone up very far. This one's worked and that one's worked but this one hasn't either. Some have worked and some haven't. <laughs> That's the one issue I've kind of had. For some reason, these diamonds haven't worked out right. Maybe it's because this one's off a little bit here. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. But basically, I need to cut these a quarter of an inch higher than the point of this diamond, which if I do that, it's not going to have any fabric there. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I decided to trim them all a quarter of an inch higher than the diamond points and just hope for the best, which I did by marking out a quarter of an inch above each point with my water erasable pen and then used my rotary cutter to trim the diamonds, which made the whole process super quick and easy. So I think I've figured out how I want to go about doing this border, but with the leftover white cotton fabric I have, I am going to have to have a seam in the border because it's just not long enough to be able to have a whole four lengths of it, if that makes sense. And I think because of all the effort I'm putting into this quilt, I don't really want to seam right on the edge where you're definitely going to be able to notice it. So I'm going to head to Spotlight and fingers crossed I can get some of the same fabric. Um, and I also just double check how much wadding I have and I do not have enough, not even close. So I'm also going to pick up some wadding as well, which this might end up being quite an expensive shop because <laughs> wadding ain't cheap. And I also need to get some quilt backing too, which ideally I would like to just use the white fabric um, for the backing as well. So yeah, let's head to Spotlight. <laughs> I'm back and luckily they had 40% off pretty much everything like the wadding was 40% off the quilting fabric was 40% off I think all the fabric was 40% off actually but it still did end up costing me $75 for the wadding the backing and enough fabric for the borders as well yeah luckily it was 40% off because that's still pretty expensive so I was able to find the same cotton I used in my quilt, um, they still had plenty of it. I ended up getting enough to make the backing out of this as well. So yeah, I'm just going to have to sew a few panels together to get a piece big enough for the back. And then for the wadding, I went with some Legacy wadding. This one was a mix. Yeah, it was an 80-20 blend, so 80% cotton and 20% polyester. I feel like it just has a bit more strength. Like the 100% cotton feels like it could break away quite easily. If you're a quilter, let me know what wadding you usually use. I think I'm going to start with the border strips and get them attached to the quilt top and that way I can figure out how much fabric I need for the backing and then I will cut the wadding to size and then pin all the layers together to hopefully start hand quilting my quilt this evening. I don't know, it's only like two o'clock at the moment I think so I should be able to get it all done in the next couple of hours. I have no idea how long these things take. 
So once I started measuring the strips to make the border, I realized it would probably be a good idea to wash the fabric first as it is cotton and would most likely shrink. And it also was really badly creased, which would come out if I gave it a good wash. So that kind of put a stop to the quilting for that day. But the next day, once the fabric was dry, I got back to it, starting with cutting out the strips to make up the border. To start with, I gave the quilt top a good press with my iron and then I marked a quarter inch point from each corner of the quilt. Then with right sides together, I pinned the border strips to the edge of the quilt, making sure to only pin and stitch them to the quarter inch point. Once stitched in place, I pressed the seams towards the border and then folded the corners of the quilt together, placing the border strips on top of one another to create a 45 degree angle like this. I then marked out a 45 degree angle line onto the border fabric and then stitched along that line. Then once folded out, the border fabric met together perfectly into a point at the corner of the quilt. I have to say this part was very satisfying to do. I then pressed the seams open and then it was time to put all of the layers of the quilt together starting with the quilt backing. I decided to do this on the floor of my sewing space which was only just big enough but if you're a quilter I'm curious to know how you go about doing this part. I found it really difficult to get everything to lie flat nicely and even got my iron out to smooth out all of the creases at one point. I then placed the wadding layer down and by the time the quilt top layer was in place, I was absolutely knackered. Definitely the hardest part of this project so far. Then to secure all of the layers together, I used some curved safety pins that I found in the quilting section at Spotlight and simply pinned all of the layers together using pretty much every single pin in the pack so that the three layers of the quilt would not move around at all while I hand stitch all the layers together. I was then finally able to just relax on the couch for the rest of the day and watch movies while it rained outside and started stitching all of the layers of the quilt together by hand. Okay, so it is currently the Monday of a three day weekend and I haven't really touched my quilt in a few days. I've kind of been hand stitching it on and off for a good week or so. And I was planning on spending the majority of the long weekend just stitching up this quilt, but I haven't actually even touched it yet. So I'm planning on spending this Monday just stitching up as much of this quilt as possible. It is like below zero degrees outside. So it's the perfect day to just get cozy and stay inside all day just stitching up this quilt. Let me show you what I've done so far and give you a little bit of a look at my current setup. I've set up in our lounge room and as you can see I've just popped my ironing board down to its lowest level so it kind of acts as a little table as I sew and then I have just been hand stitching along all of the diamonds which is actually very therapeutic to do and what's really nice is on the other side it kind of creates this lovely stitched texture on the backing because yeah I'm kind of stitching all of the layers together so the backing the wadding and the quilt top I just think it adds such a unique look to the quilt and it's just a little bit extra special um, and I'm really enjoying the process so far too so what I'm using to quilt my quilt is this DMC Petra thread and then I'm also just using some DMC embroidery needles to do the quilting. Let me quickly show you how to hand quilt a quilt. Start by tying a knot at the end of your thread 
and then thread it into the top layer of the quilt only. Pull the thread through so that the knot pops through to the back of the quilt top and then trim away the excess thread. This makes it so the thread end and knot is nicely hidden inside the quilt. Then simply thread up and down through all three layers of the quilt a good four times or more. And then pull the thread to stitch all of the layers together. Stitching a few stitches at a time like this will help keep the thread line straight and consistent. Once you get to the end of your line of stitching, tie another knot half an inch or so from the last stitch and again thread into just the quilt top layer. Then pull the thread to again pop the knot onto the inside of the quilt and then trim away the excess thread. Okay, so I've officially finished hand stitching or hand quilting this quilt. It is looking so beautiful down there. I just love the kind of puffy texture that hand quilting gives the quilt. It just looks so beautiful and it was actually so much fun to do as well. It was so therapeutic and I love that I could just do it while watching TV. It was just such a fun part of the project. I've also trimmed away the excess backing and wadding so now it's all neat along the edges and oh it's just looking so nice i'm so so happy with it and yeah i think today is going to be the day that i finish my quilt it is the 17th of june today so i think i've been working on it for a good three weeks which i don't think is too bad like i haven't felt like i've rushed through it. It's gone quickly just because I've been enjoying the process so much. I've been wanting to make this quilt so yeah I don't think that's too bad at all. I was expecting it to take a lot longer than that. So yeah today I'm going to be working on binding this quilt, finishing it all off, um, so let's get started. To make the binding I started by cutting multiple two and a half inch strips. Again using my rotary cutter to make the process super easy. And then I stitched all of the strips together to make one long strip that will end up being the binding. I then pressed the long strip of fabric in half lengthways and then stitched it to the quilt lining all of the raw edges together. Again I used a quarter of an inch seam for this part. I stitched the binding until it was a quarter of an inch away from the corners and then folded the binding up to create a 45 degree angle and then folded the binding back down so that it now lined up perfectly with the corner of the quilt. I then stitched the binding again starting a quarter of an inch away from the corner. When the binding was finally stitched all the way around the quilt, I then stitched the two ends of the binding together. And then folded it back in place and stitched the remainder of the binding in place. I then folded the non-raw edge of the binding to the back of the quilt and then stitched in the ditch of the binding, securing the back of the binding in place as I sewed. And then lastly, I removed all of the safety pins from the front of the quilt. <sighs> okay. My quilt is finally finished. I am just so, so in love with it. It's turned out way better than I ever thought it would. I'm gonna put a few shots of the quilt in now so you can get a good proper look at it and a few close-up shots as well so you can see all the details. 
I just love the puffy texture that hand quilting has given this quilt. It was definitely a lot of work and a lot of effort, but honestly, I think it was so worth it and it actually was a really enjoyable process. And I know I've sounded a bit like a broken record in this video, but I just can't get over the color palette of this quilt. The colors and fabrics just work so nicely together. I could not be happier with how it's turned out. And I also just wanted to let you know that with the issue I had with the diamond points, it ended up working out perfectly fine. Uh, just some of the diamonds are a little cut off where the border meets the quilt, but it really isn't that noticeable. Not only has this quilt turned out way better than I thought it would, I actually enjoyed the whole process a lot more than I thought I would as well. Some parts were definitely a little bit more enjoyable than others. I really enjoyed putting the quilt top together and hand stitching the layers together, which ultimately was the majority of this quilt making project. But I have to say, I did not love binding the quilt. I found that whole process super frustrating. And if I was to make another quilt, I'd probably hand bind it next time. Um, so stitch the binding by hand and not use the sewing machine because I just found it wouldn't catch the binding properly at the back very well. And I'm sure that's something that does get easier with time, but as a first time ever doing that, I found it super frustrating. Pretty much apart from the binding at the end, I loved every single moment of making this quilt and I can definitely see myself making another one in the future. Thank you so much for coming along on this quilt making journey. It was so fun to document the whole process and I'm pretty sure this video is going to be my longest video I've ever made just because I've never documented a huge project like this before. So yeah, please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it and if you're a quilter um, and you have some extra tips that you think might come in handy next time I make a quilt, then I would love to hear them below as well. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to subscribe to my channel for more sewing videos like this one. And don't forget to go and get your free trial of Skillshare. You can find a link to it down in the description below. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching.